Good morning. God bless each and every one of you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the first begotten from the grave. Hallelujah. It is another day's journey, and we are so glad about it. Amen. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, we look forward to a new month. Amen. August 2nd, 2020. It is the eighth month, which is the number that represents new beginnings. And so we hope and pray that you will receive a, a fresh new beginning in what area of life you may be in. Hallelujah. Today we're still talking about wisdom. In Unit 3, we're talking about faith and wisdom in the book of James. We know we have covered uh, wisdom in the Old Testament through Proverbs and Psalms, amen, and even in the Gospels. And now we're going to look at how wisdom reveals itself in the book of James. Our key verse for today comes from James chapter 1, verse 5, where, where it is stated, from the King James Version, if any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And also from the NIV Version, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen beautiful lesson. James just uh, smacks us in the face with that particular verse. Amen. A lot of people uh, want joy. A lot of people want happiness. A lot of people want to go uh, in their uh, daily uh, ventures in life uh, kind of exuberant, effervescent, you know, happy-go-lucky. And uh, it will cost you to have real joy. Joy is a gift from the character of God. It's from the nature of who God is. He's a joyful God. Amen. And if you are connected with him, you will experience that joy regardless of what, what you may be experiencing, regardless of what you have, regardless of what you're going through. Jesus is joy. The Bible says, I believe it's in uh, Jeremiah, that... Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And if we know that, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and that in the presence of God there's fullness of joy, hallelujah, and that God inhabits the praises of his people, then we would uh, take note to try to manifest, amen, the presence of God by going about and giving God his word, praising him, lifting up God, hallelujah. Whether you're in a lion's den or a fiery furnace, you want to be able to give God praise, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. The Bible says also, it says, you have given us the oil of gladness, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, I had the experience of uh, growing up in a large family, a family of nine, five boys, amen, and four sisters. And I was the uh, fifth born male child and the seventh born out of nine. And so <clears throat> I had the unique opportunity to wear what we call pass-me-downs or hand-me-downs, amen. And so I, I found, you know, found myself wanting what my brothers had when I was, you know, too young to wear, too little to wear, but I always envied what they had. Ooh, I can't wait to have wear that. You know, I appreciated the hand-me-downs, the pass-me-downs, but one of the things you don't find out in life, you don't hear too often, you don't hear people say, ooh, I wish I had his pain, I wish I had his suffering, I wish I could go through all that what he's going through, come on somebody. We don't envy the hardships that people endure. We don't envy the trouble that they're going through. And so James, he smacks us in the face. He says, count it all joy. Amen, we're not there yet. 
But we're going to get to that particular verse. Amen. And so we thank God for today. And so this morning's lesson, we're still talking about wisdom. Amen. And uh, we're going to look at uh, why this lesson matters. This lesson matters because people desire to be seen as wise. What is the source of wisdom? The letter written by James affirms that God gives wisdom generously and ungrudgingly to those who ask in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. So the lesson in focus says in our Christian walk, we begin with faith. Along the way, we embrace God's wisdom that gives us the wherewithal to persevere through life's trials and tribulations. Yes, yes. And I'm glad we uh, started right there because this particular story talks about uh, trials. It talks about endurance. And this particular lesson, Byron Hosefer shared a most fitting story about wisdom and perseverance. He shares the story. He says, you see, the farmer thought the mule was not worth saving when it fell into a well accidentally. So he thought he would just put it out of its misery by burying it. And we all fall in the situation accidentally and sometimes intentionally. But despite the farmer's best efforts to bury the mule, he shovel at the shovel he threw on top of the mule, but the mule resisted until it was able to climb out of the well on top of the dirt that was thrown in after him. The mule, despite the fact it was initially in a deep well, would not give up. The mule simply shook the dirt off shovel by shovel, never giving up the will to live, to climb out of the well. We may all have fallen into a hole at one time or another. While we did not intend to, some of us act like the mule and fight and fight until we get out of the hole, while others may try a few attempts, but in the end, just give up and stay where they have fallen. The difference between the ones who are able to climb out and the ones who ultimately give in and stay in their hole is really a matter of one's overpowering desire to get out from under whatever is pushing you down or trapping you. For those who have this power, it is not a matter of hoping to get out of the hole, but only a matter of when. The writer then goes on to say, we must have mule sense to know that what doesn't kill us only makes us stronger. And if we don't have that sense, we must ask God and he will give it to us. Amen? Amen. I thought that story would help us realize that wisdom is the kind of sense that God gives us to call upon him when a situation looks hopeless, when it looks like we're already counted out, cast down, but not destroyed. God, there's help on the way. Amen? Amen. So our uh, background scripture, amen, it comes from uh, James chapter 1, uh, 1 through 11, and we're going to read those particular scriptures. But our devotional reading comes from Isaiah 40, 1 through 8. And I, I would recommend that you all read that in your uh, free time. Uh, it talks about how, you know, uh, heaven and earth will pass away. Uh, man will pass away. You know, the, uh, the rich will pass away. But the word of the Lord will endure forever. Amen. Jesus in his first coming, in his first advent, you know, he stood on the word of God. He increased in wisdom and in stature of men and in favor with man. But one of the things he always did, he always lifted up the word of God. And if we're going to be Psalm 1 people, and we're going to be Proverbs 31 women, and 
Psalm 1 men. We want to hold up the word of God. Amen. Because that's where wisdom comes from. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us get to our scripture. Amen. And so we, if you don't mind, we're going to read from 1 to 11. And then we're going to go back and try to get some, some beautiful uh, tidbits from this beautiful lesson. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So verse 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations. He says, greetings. Consider it put pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Woo! Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. My God. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Verse 9 from the KJV. Let the brother of low degree con rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I just got to say that uh, everyone, whether they believe in Jesus or not, will face troubles and trials. You can be a source of strength to unbelievers when they are facing troubles by listening to their struggles or offering the hope that God knows they're struggling and that he loves and cares for them. Amen? Amen. This morning, as I was taking my trash out, I was uh, approached by two people. Uh, one was a pastor, and he shared with me how his wife was taking the trash out, and she was holding on to the rail in her house going down the stairs and she accidentally failed because the railing came loose and she tumbled down and broke her leg. He wasn't home at the time, he was at work. And so uh, some things transpired and anyway, help got to his wife. She had an operation, they put pins in her knee and uh, she's much better off now. As he was telling me this, another young lady approached us, and she, I said, hey, how you doing? You know, being friendly in my neighborhood. And she shared with me that she's had a, a bad week. She didn't use that word, but she used another word that explained, you know, the colorful uh, events that took place. in uh, yesterday, she was going to check her mail, and she was jumped and beat. She was beat down. And I said, why would those individuals beat you down like that? And she said, because I'm bisexual. And I said, is there anything we could do? And she said, y'all could pray for me. We was in the right place at the right time. She's a non-believer. She's a witch. She's a confessed witch. She belongs to a coven. Pray for her. Her name is Caitlin. And uh, I believe God's going to bring her out. Why did I share that? She is going through a trial. She's going through some tribulation. Amen. And we can give encouragement to
to people when they're going through difficulties of life. And so no matter who you are, saved or unsaved, we all are going to experience trouble. But aren't you glad that trouble don't last always? Amen. You know, we as Christians, all of us are going to wear crowns. But Jesus said, if you're going to follow him, you must bear your cross. So even though you're going to one day wear a crown, we all got to bear our crosses, no matter what they are. But the thing is, your cross is tailor-made for you. You ever hear anybody say, hey, I wish I had his cross? No, 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 no. They don't, they don't do that. Because your cross is tailor-made to perfect the perseverance or the patience that's in you. Amen. You may need some patience that may uh, be for a 10-year period. Whereas I, I'm wearing some garments that's just uh, uh, temporary, you know, a five-year span. So God's working on my faith with uh, some trials real quick, you know, like microwave quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I may go through something that you may never go through to perfect my faith right now on the spot. Amen. And so I thought that was, you know, kind of particular, you know. Now, now listen, none of us likes to be called pain freaks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I know I don't. Woo! We all experience pain. Physical pain, emotional pain, bereavement, grief, pain. But nobody likes to wake up and say, oh, I think I ordered some, uh, some from one to ten. I think I ordered some ten pain today. I want to go through some emotional suffering so that I can experience some patience down the line. <laughs> Man, please. <laughs> I like joy. Amen. Amen. And, and that's what uh, we will reap if we faint not. We're going to get some joy. But uh, listen, uh, James says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. You know, there was a song I remember singing. It says, count your blessings. Name them one by one, and you will discover what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings, then you will surely see what the Lord has done for, for thee. But it is, we don't, we don't walk around counting our bad times. Most of the time, we count our good times. We'll tell everybody the good things about our life. But we don't share the sufferings we endure. And it's from those experiences that we get joy. Because we know that God is faithful to his word. He has never neglected us, counted us as an orphan, mm. counted us like you don't belong to me and I'm not going to help you now. You got in that trouble last week and I helped you out. You got into it again this week. I'm getting tired of helping you. No, no, no. That's not what kind of God we serve. We serve a loving and a kind and compassionate God. And whenever we call upon him, his ears are not deaf. His face is against those who do wickedness, but his ears are always open to the cry of the righteous. Aren't you glad about it today? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the subject is ask for it. Ask for it. So the lesson starts off, you know, James, he says in verse 1, he says, uh, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So the author of this particular lesson is James. James is the servant of the Lord. He's also the brother of of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's the brother of Jesus. And so James wants us to know that not only is he a servant, but he's a he's a bond servant. Amen. And you got to know that you know no man can serve two masters. You got to make up in your mind today. Either you're going to be a servant of God or you're going to be a servant of the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. You got to serve somebody, and you got to confess that with your mouth. You got to let people around you know, hey, as for me and my house, we're going to be 
servants of the Lord. We're going to serve God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Amen. Seven days a week. Amen. 365 days out of a year. 24-7. I'm a servant of the Lord. I made up my mind. I'm a servant of the Lord. Not when I feel good. Come on, somebody. Amen. But every day of my life. And so James is writing to those who are going through some suffering. He's writing to those who have been dispersed all over the world. And he's writing to those who, who left Jerusalem willingly and those who left because of the persecution of their faith. Amen. Amen. And so James is uh, writing to them and he's uh, giving them some encouragement. He says in verse 2, he says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials or many kinds of difficulty. Amen? Amen. So we all as believers, we, we get into some trouble intentionally. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We jump into it. <laughs> Amen. But you know, when you get into trouble, you got to know that your God is not going to forsake you. Amen. Ask Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Ask uh, Daniel, who was cast into the lion's den when he refused to uh, give up his prayer time. Amen. I don't know why you're in trouble. But listen, it's not because you may be a, a bad boy. It may be <laughs> because God is trying to perfect your faith. So don't quit on God just because you're going to do some difficulty. Amen. <laughs> Amen. A lot of young Christians stop going to church because their faith get tested. Now, God is not going to uh, 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 tempt you with evil. God is not a tempter. But he will test your faith so that you can be promoted. Mm. Amen. Before promotion, there must be an examination. And your faith, amen, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So since you decided to put faith in, you're getting into the word so that the word get into you. And so God, he, he, he's equipping you and he has to try your faith, put fire up under it so that you can grow in knowledge and grow in the grace of God and be an example for other believers and for, and, and for people who are not believers because they'll start seeing the joy that you have after you have gone through many trials and they'll say, man, I sure want some of that joy. And you got to know that the joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you. And the world can't take it away. Amen? Amen. So, he said, the reason why your joy is being tested is because, he says right there in verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Patience for what? Why do we need patience? Because Jesus, he's not here yet. Hello. We're still waiting for him. Amen. We're, we're longing for him. With every morning, we should throw up our hands and say, Lord, even so come. Come deliver us. But he's not here yet. So we need patience, amen, to wait for his coming. He's coming. Make no doubt about it. God is coming again. And when he comes, he's going to take back all those who look like him, all those who've been through trials, all those who have been tested, all those who are going through and coming out of something. Aren't you glad about it? Amen. He's not going to abandon you, but you're going through what you're going through because God loves you so that you can lack nothing. Praise the Lord. You know, when you lack wisdom, the Bible says, ask God. Amen. Education is good. Education helps you, uh, uh, it equips you to uh, find the answer to many questions in life. Amen. If you want to find out how, the, uh, the, how humans interact between one another, you study sociology. 
If you want to understand the workings of the mind, you study psychology. And so education helps you uh, find the answers to life's problems. But one thing wisdom does, wisdom helps you apply the information to your life so that you cannot please man, but please God. Hallelujah. And with God, amen, you know, they may not grade you on a curve in sociology or psychology, but God always grades you on a curve because Jesus already fixed it. Hallelujah. You've already passed. Amen. Glory to God. And so, uh, I wanted to share the fact that uh, every believer, amen, is under construction. Amen. God is working on you, in you, and through you to perfect your faith. But one thing God cannot use, look at verse 6. It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And from the NIV, it says it like this. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. I like what uh, the King James says. Amen. He says, but when you ask God, you must ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea. Amen. And so verse 7 says, for let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We don't want to be double-minded. We don't want to go Go to God asking him for something, amen, petitioning him, and doubt in our minds that God is not able to deliver. God is able to give us what we petition him to do. Uh, he's given us access into the very presence of his strong room. And so, uh, Verse 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you come to God and you ask him for something, but yet at the same time you doubt, you're like something that's unstable. I believe that's the correct interpretation of a double-minded man. I used to think that it was more like a person who was a schizophrenic, a double-minded. You know, one day you act like Dr. Jeff Ward, and the next minute you act like Dr. High, you know, and uh, or, or a spiritual-minded man one day and then a natural-minded man the other day. Or James also used the analogy of uh, one minute you go to a, uh, some fresh water, you drink it and it's fresh, and then the next minute you drink it and then it's salty, that shouldn't come up out of a believer. Amen. Say what you mean, mean what you say. If you're going to be light, be light. Amen. Don't be a double-minded man. A double-minded man cannot please God. And so what you want to do, you want to develop in your mind a spiritual mind so that God can give you things and so you be in a mindset that you can receive from God. See, a natural-minded person can't receive the things for, from God because they're foolishness to him. That's, that's why a lot of people don't experience miracles. Because not only do they limit God, but they limit themselves. You have to remember that you have been born again. You're not who you used to be. But God is developing you to be just as Christ is in heaven. So are you on earth. That's why he's given us his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, as you continue to uh, develop the, a, a good relationship with God, go before him as a child and ask for it. Whatever you ask for, keep asking. Whatever you are, uh, are seeking, keep on seeking. 
Whatever you are knocking for, keep on knocking, and God will grant your petition. There's a particular verse, uh, I believe it's in 1 John chapter, mm, it says, anyway, I've tried to commit it to memory. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And since we know that he hears us, we have the petition that we have requested. And so God, he hears every believer, wherever you may be, whatever you may be going through, God is hearing your Requests. I like to think about the uh, the letters A S K as an acronym. A stands for uh, adoration. When you go before God, you want to adore Him. You want to just lavish upon Him, give Him all kinds of praise, and let Him know that He's worthy. Let Him know who He is. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the fairest among 10,000 to my soul. Let him know that, amen, he was so glad that he walks with you and he talks with you and that he tells you that you are his own. Let him know that you are so glad and so happy, hallelujah, that he looked beyond all your faults and sees your needs. And when you go before God, you want to go before him thirsty. Seeking him. Let him know that you're seeking after his desire for your life. Let him know that you're thirsting after him. Let him know that there's a great desire for you to press on into an intimate relationship with him. Put on the mind of Christ. And when doors close in your face, keep on knocking. Get God's attention, even though he's, he's, he's omniscient, he knows you got his attention. It reminds me of uh, when, when I was young, I used to get put on restriction. I used to choose sometimes restriction over a whipping. <laughs> I, I used to allow, you know, be put on restriction. But anyway, before the day was out, I was already pleading my mama, mama, mama. Mama, please let me out. <laughs> mama, mom. <laughs> and mama would ultimately give in and give up. And let me come out of my restriction. Let me come out of my room and, so I could watch TV or play pool. And uh, God has that sensitive heart. He, he petitions you to, to beg from him. And it, it's nothing wrong with begging God. It's nothing wrong with pleading with God. Amen. Men know how it is to beg. Amen. Many of them who, who got wives, they beg a lot. Amen. When the children, children grow up begging. Amen. Nothing wrong with begging. Amen. I was a beggar. I'm still a beggar. Hallelujah. And people can recognize beggars. <laughs> Amen. Every preacher is a beggar. He know how to beg, amen. He don't mind begging because he knows that begging can get the attention of God, amen. Hallelujah. There's one thing God can't use, though. God can't use a tearless Christian. I don't believe God can use a, a, a person who's not a beggar. When you go to the throne of God, you have to be able to intercede not only for yourself, but for the hurts for the pains, for the suffering that's in the world today. And brothers and sisters, we're living in some perilous times. We're living in some difficult times. Amen. We got to be able to pray for our children who they want to go back to school. And so we need wisdom to, uh, to help us decide whether or not it's feasible, amen, and physically healthy to send our children into school system that ultimately will, some kids, sad to say, will be infected. Because every area of life has been infected. Why do they think that the school system is not going to be infected? From the White House, to the police station, to the fire station, 
and even some churches have been infected with coronavirus. Why do you even think that sending the schools, the children are going to be infected? But anyway, we need wisdom, and that's what we're talking about. God give us wisdom to make the right decisions. Because we don't want to, uh, five days after we make a decision, be saying, oh me, oh my. Because you can be wise and you can be foolish. We don't want to be foolish for making the wrong decision. Amen. So, let's move on to verse 9. It says, let the believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high positions. Amen. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Hallelujah. God will exalt you if you humble yourself. If you humble yourself in the sight of God, God will lift you up. He says, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wind, a wild fire, excuse me, a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, it blossoms it blossoms, falls, and its beauty is destroyed. And in the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Amen. Believers with limited financial resources still have a reason to count it all joy because they were poor to begin with or lost it because of their faith. They had limit limited financial resources. However, they serve a God who granted them wisdom generously. The rich were different. While they thought they had it going on, they were living in a state of humiliation. They were glorying in their temporal things. Jesus warns uh, them about the difficulty or the impossibility of the rich to be saved as well as the concept of the first being last and the last being first. James likened the riches to a desert flower. Because of the brutal desert heat, the flower has a very limited uh, lifespan. At the height of its beauty, the flower is destroyed. James said that the rich would experience the same thing. They will die at the height of their material wealth. We have read stories of extremely rich people who died at the height of their wealth and power. Their wealth remained, but they passed on. James had a simple lesson. Our trials make us rich in our faith, perseverance, wisdom, and humbleness. Amen. And so we thank God that God does not uh, put limits on your wealth. He wants you to increase, amen, in wisdom, in riches, amen, but also in characteristics from him. He wants you to, amen, be uh, uh, over abounding in humility and the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, tenderness, mercy, long-suffering, patience. He wants you to grow in, not only in the knowledge of God, but also in the fruits of the Spirit of God. Amen? And so, you can be rich, but don't let your riches keep you out of heaven. Amen? Be humble and share what God gives you. And we thank God for the lesson today that whatever you need, Ask God. There is no limitation for what God has for you. May God keep you. May God bless you. It's my prayer. Look forward to seeing you next week. Lord willing. Amen.